how did you, Alan, how did you come to us today? Um, because you've come over from Geneva yep, to, to I came to, to, to Geneva and I sent these pieces, we'll, we'll discover very soon, uh, eight pieces from the private collection, uh, which tell a lot of different uh, subject about the brand. So, Alan, before we get into the watches, yep. we have to discuss what's on your wrist because you're double wristing today. <laughs> yes, I have two arms, so two watches. Now, uh, you've got to tell us the story of, of this piece first. Yeah, the, this one is a, a watch which has the Beta 21 Quartz movement, which okay. was launched in collaboration with other brands than Piaget mm -hmm. in 1969. Mm -hmm. And this is exactly the same case as the watch which belonged to Andy Warhol and we have in the private collection. And I think this one is really something different. The treatment of gold, the case, the size, because it's mm -hmm. very big even for the period because of the movement, mm -hmm. the dimensions of the movement uh, force the, the case to be that size in thickness and dimensions. But I think it's, it's very Piaget, very generous, very open, and full of color with a ornamental stone dye. It's amazing now, actually, it looks spectacular on the wrist, but when you see it here and the play in the light, the way that the center of the dial, particularly along the lateral yep. element, starts yep. to dance in the light. It, there's a structure in the making of the case, even in the finishing and even uh, the, the making of, of the case itself. And so we have to just touch on the Beta 21 element. So there weren't very many of these made. This, this is not one, the dial this, that case, came this case with the ornamental stone dial without the data three, we made only 10. Okay. Um, Roman numerals originally on this dial. So when you bought it originally, it had Roman numerals. And yeah. then you said to the team, I, Piaget, you wanted yeah, to I, I sent the watch to our customer service for the movement because it had to be relaunched. And unfortunately, when they opened the case, the dial broke because it was under tension. It happens. So. I ordered a new one, the closest to the original one. Yeah, which for some, you know, would be forgiven for thinking it's tiger's eye, but it's not. No, it's Taurus eye. Taurus eye. So Taurus a bit eye. more reddish yes. than tiger eye. And another detail, what I, I love about that watch is we can't see it, but inside the circle which uh, put the movement in the case is in gold, hmm. not in metal. Hmm. And one thing I've just noticed now is that the Piaget logo itself is considerably smaller here than it, than it is on some of the more modern references. At that time it was that size yeah. and I wanted to keep it as much as it was originally. Incredible. So for me it's okay. And the one thing that the folks watching at home won't be able to, to, to appreciate is the sound of the Beta 21 because yeah. it has this incredible humming background uh, vibration to it. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which no, is it's, magical. It's a piece of history. And actually, I immediately saw it and thought that it was a more modern reference because the, the early ones had three tiers on the case, or some of them did. Some there had are different kind of uh, cases. Uh, there's one which has three steps, like the last one. Mm -hmm. And there's this one, but we made, of course, much less pieces. But the rectangular one has more often the three steps. Beautiful. And there is also beautiful. the rectangular one with that kind of more steps on the top and the big one on the bottom. Incredible. Beautiful. Put that one back on. What else have you got on there? And you've got another one on the wrist. Uh, <laughs> as if that wasn't enough. Oh, well, this one is more, it's another kind of specific know-how of Piaget. It's the work of gold mm -hmm. and the color. And also the finishing of the case is very interesting because you have the polished angles and the structure of the the other surfaces. It is incredible. The these dials, it's really hard to appreciate in still images how these dials come alive. Yeah, you have to move the You've watch. got to move the watch. It's it's a living dial for it, me. It reminds me of those those books that have you know, I don't know what the books are now, but they've yeah, got, you yeah. know, you know, yeah. when you move it, and it, yeah, yeah. it comes alive almost. Yeah. Incredible, you, incredible. And this bracelet, I, I still don't know actually how something so like this is even when made. When you turn it, you see the structure of the bracelet. Mm. When you finish the bracelet, it's like this mm -hmm. on both sides. Mm. And when it's finished, we give it to the engraver. And the art of the engraver is to make the structure disappear ah. by engraving the metal. 
So if you, if you look at, for example, two watches with the same bracelet, now we call it the Palace Decor. But at that time it was A6, because it was another way of reference of bracelets. But if you look at two bracelets, they can be rather different because it's handmade. Mm. So that's why I love it. Uh, I remember my former director, she was, she's a lady, a very elegant lady, and she bought uh, another watch, with a jewelry watch, and we compared our bracelet, and they were not the same. Incredible. Incredible. So it, it's not unique, but it's not always the same. So that's what I like. Beautiful. Right, and I'll put that, put that back on there. Take us, take us on the journey into Piaget here, because so. really, w with this box we have here, as you've already touched on, we've got a little bit of everything from the past, and in many ways, the essence of what makes Piaget Piaget. I think so. That's what I, my purpose in that selection is to express. Oh, no, <laughs> no, no, no. So no, no, no. <laughs> if we start uh, on the, the first one is wow. a new trapped in watch. Okay. Uh, with the special, uh, I like it very much. The case is similar to the watch I have because I like that kind of, of watch. There's a tension with the angles, but it's rounded. Uh, and look, look at the dial. It's absolutely amazing. Like a psychedelic model. I've never seen no a dial name. like it. I've there never seen no a dial. name before 1990, apart from the Polo in 79 yep. so it's an ultra thin watch but and look at the engraving of, of the dial it's very delicate look even on the on the lugs it's a very sophisticated finishing and these elements these circular elements on the dial so are this very is lacquer lacquer varied in color so they go from quite light green to exactly very dark to green. blue, but maybe they could have made it in orange, in black. And you get a view into the movement or the base plate yeah, as well. Yeah, because it's lacquer, so it's a bit of transparency. It is unbelievable. It's absolutely unbelievable. And this is 76. Yeah. Even if the case was produced from 1960, when the ultra thin self winding movement 12P was launched. Mm. And at that time, that movement was the thinnest automatic movement in the world because you have the oscillating weight not put on the movement but inside the movement off centered in 20 carat gold micro rotor so exactly micro rotor so uh, it's stunning and, and 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 how did you acquire this and, and how do you as the director you know how do you find watches that are interesting for the collection do you remember most of the came? time it's from auction houses but mm -hmm. from sometimes it's directly from the owner okay so because i've seen this case shape before yeah if, if a client were to send you the information on the case the movement etc you, you could share information with them about when it was made maybe or how many were made in that format yeah but yeah. without the specific without, information exactly uh, the mention of the dial is missing okay yeah. Yeah. unbelievable Un i'm sorry but if you talk about elegance, no, it's you, 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 you rock up to the dinner with that on. Following that one, we have the same movement with that watch, which has many, many things about Piaget. The work of gold about the bracelet, the ultra thin movement, the 12P, and the color with the ornamental stone on the dial. And look at the circle, the outer circle of lapin, lapis lazuli. It's not one piece, mm. it's eight pieces. Mm. It's like a marquetry. Mm. And pull out the crown, look the time when you turn it, the hour. Incredible, absolutely There's incredible. There's no hand for the hours. <laughs> it's the diamond set in the lapis lazuli which indicate the hour. Wow. Wow. I'm sorry. And the size of the logo on there is so elegant and so it's, small. Yes. It's, it's beautiful. And you it look... Always Piaget, and normally you have Piaget automatic. Alongside each other, yeah, whereas here they're, they're separated. The, yes, because of the diamond paved center. And we have two main inspirations at Piaget, mm -hmm. couture and nature. Mm -hmm. And this is a very, but it's also a kind of, my, my grandmother, she had a, an Astrakhan mm -hmm. coat. Mm -hmm. it, you can think of a lot of things. It's, it's free. And, and where did the competencies come from 
within Piaget to produce the type of work? Because this is quite specific, and this is not something you see from other manufacturers, even of the era. I tend to, to think that we were about the only brand to make so many different... I have counted more than 100 different bracelet patterns wow. on about eight to nine structures. Mm -hmm. Each was developed, animated into 20, 30 different patterns. And the records for these watches, do they reflect the patterns that were created by that artist, that bracelet specialist, or just the, gives you the, the material, the period in which it was made? Does it specify the, a name for this type of Never design? any name. No. It's only a, a, a number, a letter and a number, and that's all. It was more spontaneous, very mm -hmm. free. Mm -hmm. the, the closest thing I can think of is maybe in, in Glasuta where the balance cocks are engraved by the artist and they have the watchmaker, the finisher, they have the freedom to then create exactly. something yeah. of their own. Nothing was planned, uh, it was just on the moment. Incredible, absolutely yeah. incredible. Thank you. That's why the, <laughs> the hand of, may, of man is so, so important, important at Piaget. Unbelievable, wow. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so two. So we two. have these two pieces, and we arrive in 79 to the icon, the Piaget Polo. So look at this the integration of the pattern of the bracelet into the dial. This is really something which tells something about the brand. Look at this. Even the. the the glass is, in, is not flat, it's slightly curved. <laughs> very unusual to see in white gold, as I understand it. The white gold variation it's, was produced in It was less more levels. produced in yellow gold mm -hmm. and two, two, two gold, yellow and white gold. But this one, I chose this one because I think it's a more particular one. Yeah. And, and, and you're with the date at three o'clock, it's a very special one. You know, for me handling these, because I've never handled watches like this before, quite honestly, <laughs> there's the design element, which is, of course, very beautiful, but then there's the actual physical element. That's it's why you so have to incredible. touch it. You have to wear it. You have to touch it. You have to feel it. It's not something which is on a visual, on a, on a picture. You have to have the, the, it the, on the your own. The quality yeah. of, of, the, of, the, of the, the worksmanship that's gone on is, yeah. even now, in, in watches that... that Still but feel very we crisp. have launched it again this year. Yeah. We pre you were in Ixtad. Yeah, yes. And I was lucky to see that the, br the bracelet the actor, is like this one. Yeah. They maintain the same static because it's an icon. It's timeless. The, 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 I'd love to get your thoughts on the new model, just on the side. But the way that bracelet's been produced on the new 79, um, that's, that's sort of an interlocking system. More yes, of because they have thing thought of about about different uh, models maybe with hot stone yes so they anticipated the the structure the making of the bracelet which can uh, adopt new development yes. developments this one they had some uh, ornamental stone on the dial but mm -hmm. not on the bracelet and, and this is a quartz model but this did come in automatic as well there was automatic white There gold. was an automatic, there was a perpetual calendar, there was even a 9P, the, the mythic, mythical 9P movement. There With was the big a lot date. of There was a big date as well. There was a big date on some of them. The big windows for the big date. Uh, the month, the <laughs> day, and, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. And, and the number. So yeah. yes, you had a lot, a lot of different, of, different sizes. This is the big one, the yes. biggest, 34. Let's see it on so your you wrist. Let's see it on your wrist there, because I think this is an interesting point here. I mean, sizing, Piaget has, in many ways, Piaget was ahead of the curve that we're living in now, which is towards more uh, elegant dress size. I think it's okay. It's beautiful on you. All of us sit at home online and we see the number yeah. and we're like, no, that's never going to work for me, but you've got to try it on to know. And it looks just fantastic. Yeah. Beautiful. And like a second skin. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Incredible. Um, what, 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 are you, what, what, what are your general s thoughts around the launch this year? It's, it's an anniversary year for Piaget, um, the new Polo. I mean, you've obviously been wanting that watch for some time to, to come around. I mean, you've probably known about it for some time <laughs> before we all knew about we, it. But I heard about it. I was not sure they would uh, make it, really. Yeah. And when they launched it, I said, yes, it's, 
it's an amazing way to start our 150 yeah. anniversary year. So it was, it was perfect. Incredible. Yeah. This one is also nice with the setting and the, on, uh, the onyx dial. Mm -hmm. And as I understand it, these square models were actually more popular than the In round the beginning, models yes. at the start. Because the integration is maybe more obvious than on the round model. It is a bracelet. It, it is it's a bracelet watch <laughs> than a watch bracelet. <laughs> Mr. Piaget tells the difference. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's seamless, isn't it? it really and is. that one has um, like 80% of the polo, the famous 7P quartz movement, mm -hmm. launched in 1976. And at that time, it was developed by Piaget, of course, mm -hmm. and it was the thinnest quartz movement in the world. Mm. And it's not me, but it's our customer service who told me it was 34 times more precise than the Japanese quartz movement. I would like to show you one piece which is also amazing about the specific know-how of Piaget. We spoke about the gold brasser, but look at the dial. It's, a, it's an amazing marquetry of jade and lapis lazuli because you have two handwood movements. Yep. It's absolutely spectacular. The, the drama of it is, it's, it's, uh, well, it's, it's again like nothing I've ever seen actually on a, on a dial before. Um, I never saw anything like this <laughs> no. in, in anywhere else. Maybe, uh, maybe I just missed it. But. It's just so elegant. And of course you've got the twin crowns on each side of the case to adjust the time. Yeah, exactly, um, dual time. And the movement was something that Piaget developed. Exactly, it developed a small movement which was sometimes also used for feminine uh, models, jewelry or not, mm -hmm. but uh, for the dual time it was just perfect because it's one, it's 10 millimeters in diameter. The interesting thing that's quite pronounced for me here, of course the dial is the star of the show, but the, the way that they've extended this exactly, onto the on case. the case, exactly. It's the, what I spoke about the, tw the polo, the integration, mm. it's always something which is uh, constant at Piaget. That is something that is so true and I think um, I can't, no one comes to mind now from a design perspective from another manufacturer that has extended that design all the way onto the case. And that sophistication yeah. in the finishing and the treatment of gold. I think I never saw it anywhere else. No, it's, it's spectacular. Have you seen another one of these? Is that the only one you see? We have another one in the, in the private collection but with just uh, other stones. Okay. Coral and onyx, wow. so always a very strong contrast. And again, the reference in the the the, 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 the records w will not sp specify the, specify. the details on the case no. on the dial. No. Sorry, that speaks to the joy and the excitement I think for collectors out there with Piaget is the fact that it, it's absolutely the myriad of different colours, the myriad of different stones. The you know we never know where they are. <laughs> no. So one day I have to be ready to choose the piece which appears. Uh, in an auction. So the next one is probably, apart from the, I'll let, I'll let you do that. The <laughs> Andy Warhol one. <laughs> Maybe it's one of the pieces which will be so uh, surprising for you. I, I don't think you ever saw I've like something like this before. I've never seen anything like it. That's the only thing. Wow, look at that. Look at that. I've got to say the buckle, just as a side note, the buckle, the way the buckles integrate into the bracelets themselves, something else. Wow. I mean, you'll come away with a, a decent bicep after wearing I think that you need another too. one. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise you have. Wow, wow. This is, I mean, that is generosity, just the treatment of gold, the color on the dial, mm -hmm. the 9P movement, mm -hmm. and something so extravagant. So, so, so w what is this we're looking at here? What is this watch? Um, it's a secret watch. Secret watch. Secret Reference watch. The secret watch. That's Never it. any name. No, Piaget Polo know. is the first name, and then we have the Dancer in 1986. In between, you have an ultra-thin watch, 
a jewelry watch, a necklace watch, a mm -hmm. cuff watch, mm -hmm. a secret watch. And then later, El Teplano was given Oof. to reflect much 40 better. years later, 1998. But that's a really important they point only, to know. They never wanted any name because they, they were um, afraid people would buy a model name, not a brand name. Mm -hmm. And they always put the brand first. first. Again, that's, that's unique. That's, That's the, the will of Valentin and Gerard Piaget. Yeah. Incredible. So, 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 so would this have been something to, to made to order by a client when this was originally made? Or? No, no, we made 12 pieces. <laughs> so in the world, there are 11 pieces because we have one. Mm -hmm. So it's just, for me, it's one of the most spectacular pieces of our private collection. Incredible. Tiger's Eye Dial. Yeah. Tiger's and, Eye and when you close it, it's it's a jewel. Wow. You can wear it. What do you reckon? Let us know in the comments if, if I can rock that or not. I reckon <laughs> I reckon I give it a good crack. Two hundred and forty seven grams. Incredible. They were not afraid. And forgive me, how do we actually action the It's on the side. Look at Ah, so there's a tiny Just push. Press it. Oh, yeah. There we go. Wow. And have to put the push that yep. in slightly. Exactly. So it's really tiny, very beautifully integrated. You don't see you it. You don't see it. Wow. And I've got to say, you know, it feels robust as well. It doesn't feel like it's, it feels incredibly well put it's together. A, you're not going to, you could do it over and over again. You're not going to. It's a sculpture. It's a work of art. At different levels. And but they all talk about Piaget, Utrathin, gold, movement. And sorry, this is a Hanwan caliber as well. 9P. Yeah. Oh, 9P the yeah. 9P, the famous 9P. Roman numerals painted on the dial, which yeah. we yeah. don't see very often with stone dials. You know, often it's... it's uh, sometimes with the dial, sometimes we just stick... Stick markers. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's Absolutely very good. open. And this finishing as well on here, again, is unusual. Yeah. It doesn't it, extend it, onto the texture. sides. Tactile. Texture. Very, yeah. very yeah. tactile. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. Yes, when Quentin told me to choose uh, a so nice selection, I said, yes, this one <laughs> must be part of it. Wow. And, and, and you know, the, the history of, of hidden watches, at least to my knowledge, and correct me if I'm wrong, but... We made secret, secret watches, watches from the watches. early 40s. Yeah. Because the brand was founded in 1874, but we were officially registered only in 1943. Mm -hmm. And I have a secret watch in the private collection from even, we think, 42, but very early, very mm -hmm. beginning. Uh, and we made a lot, a lot, until today. Mm. So it's really something which is part of our cre creativity. Incredible. Talking of secret watches. Another secret this watch. This is a secret watch for, for someone uh, who wants to make a real statement. This one to Andy Warhol but it was not created for him because we made 40 of these ingot watch. Mm -hmm. I'll let you open it. <laughs> the confidence he's got in me. Ah, oh, there it is. So how, how, how would... How the would, 9P movement, again, again. How would this have been worn? How is this conceived from a design perspective? Because I think it's either a table clock or a pocket watch. Yeah. It can be worn many ways, but... I don't know how Andy Warhol used to wear it, but what is important is that he found at Piaget something matching his extravagance. Yes. It's because if you have money, you can order anything anywhere. But he found at Piaget, he had nine Piaget watches. Nine. Mm -hmm. So he had this one. He had a cuff watch for mm -hmm. women, and mm -hmm. I saw a film when he wears it. Mm -hmm. uh, he had two Piaget Polo, he had ultra thin watches. So it means that the brand was really integrated into the period, the era. And it says a lot about the power of using the brand versus the model name again, because he was very invested in the brand yeah. and, and, the, and the ethos, the philosophy of, of Piaget more so than any particular model maybe. Very, and very that, interesting. And that's why he interviewed Mr. Piaget in that magazine of 1983 about the polo because the polo was 
such an, an icon from the beginning, very beginning. Yeah. But he knew what he was talking about because he bought these pieces 10 years before. Before, yeah. Incredible. Before he knew Eve. Incredible. Before he took part to the event in New York, mm -hmm. uh, before he took part to the Princess Grace Foundation event. So he loved Piaget because it was something different. Do you think pocket watches are coming back in some respects? Do you see an interest from collectors out there more so now than in the last It's maybe not well? the best, the first, top, uh, but there are some clients who want something different, mm -hmm. yeah? and they know they can find it at Piaget. We made an ultra-thin pocket watch with a tourbillon, mm -hmm. so it was not something only to give the time, but something also to express our know-how. Incredible. Amazing. And this one was bought at auction? Yes, uh, when he died in 87, they organized uh, an amazing, I have the catalog, it's five books. Yeah. He had 350 jewels and watches. <laughs> and, and our subsidiary in US bought four of the pieces uh, of the Piaget watches. And this one and oh. the final one. <laughs> which is oh, so this, amazing. I think the star of the show for me personally. So this, 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 is, this is the one watch. he used to wear. Watch. Exactly his watch. And you know what? I've, I've never handled, I know that these markers, these baton markers that are 3D effects, I've, I've seen photos of them. I this love is the first them. time I've ever seen one in the metal. It's Again, it's got this incredible effect. In, in, There's in, such a dimension, three dimensions. It's absolutely stunning. How's that achieved? How is that actually achieved on the marker itself? Because to me, I, I can't even imagine. To, to put to the finishing is with a diamond yeah. to have the polish very strong. Mm -hmm. And then you, you set in the, the, the other side. The sides. So it is a flat. It is effective. It's still a flat baton, but it's just been lifted by the finishing. Exactly. Yeah. That, is, that is stunning. We don't see that. You don't no, see that that's another way. way of expressing the sophist sophistication. And it's amazing, like any piece of great design, particularly in the watch world, that it, it lasts decades. It doesn't change a great deal. This is a watch from this year, and, and this, is, this is the original, the, the inspiration. You have the same family, but this one is amazing because they put a neutral thin movement. Hmm. So we remain in the DNA of the brand. That was the first quartz movement, so it was something new. Yep. And this one is just a tribute to history, but with the current models, the current developments, to remain in our DNA. But this is absolutely amazing. I'm so glad they bought it. I mean, it would have been wrong for you not to have had it in the, in the collection. It would have just been plain wrong. Um, <laughs> I don't know what we would have to pay today, but I was going to say you're probably pleased that it wasn't done. You know, the auction wasn't this week. It was a few 88, years ago. Yeah. 88. So but, I'm yeah. glad. What color was this dial originally? Do you think? I would say dark gray. Um, in French, we say anthracite. It's mm -hmm. it's a gray. It's not it's not black. Mm -hmm. It's not gray, uh, light gray like this. It's it's a dark gray. Very very elegant mm. and now you would describe and the almost contrast with the with the power markers is so strong it's, it's stunning now it'd be interesting to try and describe it i mean it's it's almost a violet in some respects it's got a, a, a blue bluey purple hue to it it's it's very elegant and the the color is not constant and, and the condition that you received it in, you know, how do you think Andy wore this watch? You know, I can see on the case back this, he's worn it, you know, this. The watch was already in the collection when I arrived in 2006, but I'm not sure they had to renew it because I'm not sure he wore it so, so often. I don't know. I, I this was is, not this there. Is, this is what you love, though, but when you, when you see a collector and this, but, is, the, this for, is the watch. For example, I bought uh, two months ago an ultra thin watch which belonged to Joe DiMaggio, mm. the Marine mm. Monroe's mm. husband. And I think he used to wear it a, a lot because mm. the bracelet is dead uh, and there was some probably some water inside. So I have to 
make it again but a bit better. Mm. Uh, but this one was probably in the original condition. Incredible. Yeah. Abs. Alan, thank you very much. I mean, I'm, I'm sort of struggling to, to gather my thoughts here because there's so, a lot, so much to digest. Um, as you mentioned, it is an anniversary year for Puget. So um, just as a final closing remark for, for this incredible um, trip, trip and treat <laughs> and journey into the past, what are we yeah. looking at when we look forward uh, for Piaget this year? Uh, this year it's a way to, to pay tribute to the 150 years which passed and which led us to our, uh, our uh, today. Yeah. And so I'm glad that uh, Mr. Piaget comes to the office once a month mm -hmm. so we can talk uh, with him very spontaneously, open, about different subjects, about history, because mm -hmm. he has a very good memory. Uh, so, and we, we want to integrate him into this celebration year, mm -hmm. because it's a, uh, there's only one. That's probably one of the elements that most people at home don't appreciate, is that he's still around, he still looks at the watches before they go yes, into production. Yes, and he, he has the name. Yesterday, uh, we had his cousin, Gabriel, who, and I talked to him about the better and he said, yes, and he, I remember very well, we chose this kind of, uh, so it's, it's a direct uh, dialogue, Incredible. constant. Incredible. Alan, thank you very much. It was really, a very, very kind. A, a pleasure to share my passion with another passionate of the brand. Thank, thank you. you for your time. Pleasure.